Christian people are going to prosper because God is sending a great revival of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to shake the Catholic Church. It's going to go into that part of the world. It is going to be massive and powerful. Just be ye not unwise, but understanding. Understand what the will of the Lord is. If we will seek Him, God will show us how to be blessed. God will break off of us whatever the devil has put on us in Jesus' name. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Welcome today to Word Alive. I'm Pastor Bob Rogers from Louisville, Kentucky. And on today's program, I want to share with you a real revelation I believe God's given to me from the book of Daniel that Donald Trump is a fulfillment of some of the passages in Daniel chapter 8. I'm going to share it with you. And I believe as you see this, that it will enable you to pray with more diligence and fervency for our president. But I want to say before we go into the message and uh, as I share this, I have the Bible in, entitled the Quick Scan Bible. This Bible is written in such a way where it's got all the words in it, but you can read it. You can read it 60% faster and you retain 30% more. You read one chapter, I'll read five. You read five chapters, I'll read 20. In 10 minutes a day, you can read the New Testament through uh, every month. And then you can read the Bible through four times in one year if you read 10 minutes a day. I want to send this to you. It's in the hardback copy. And I want to send it for those that will help us in our work in Israel. We have a television station in Bethlehem. It's under the Palestinian control, but it reaches into Israel. It reaches into Amman, Jordan. It covers all of Bethlehem, Jerusalem, that whole part of the world. And it is watched, uh, more people watch that station than uh, any other broadcast station in that area. And the fact is, when we, uh, we have 60 hours a week of the gospel going out, and we're trying to even enlarge that but you will help make this possible. The fact is we're now moving our antenna to a place that will be able to reach more people and it's gonna cost a lot of money. And some of you could help us do this. It will go to Israel, go into this part of the world. And some of you have some of the Lord's money and you've been praying where to send it. Some of you may have uh, the sale of a property or an inheritance and you're wondering where to send a gift. Well, I want to encourage you that this is good soil. Not one nickel of that goes to any individual. It goes 100% right back into the ministry. I'm on salary from our church. But the spreading of the gospel is so important today in the last days. I want to send this Bible to everyone that can help us with a gift of at least $100 or more. Some of you may be able to send $1,000, some of you uh, $10,000, some of you $100, some of you less. But for those who can send $100 or more, I want to send to you this great Bible, and you're going to love it. It's going to be a great blessing. But right now, I want to take you into uh, our services as I describe and explain why I believe that Donald Trump is being focused and is a part of the fulfillment of the book of Daniel, chapter 8. Because greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. Today I shall hear the word of God, and faith shall rise within me. In Jesus' name. I want you to remain standing and turn with me to the book of Daniel. Daniel, for some of you who don't read the Bible much, it's in the Old Testament, hallelujah. And it's after the book of Ezekiel. But I want you to turn in the 8th chapter. And I want to begin reading in verse 5, Daniel 8, 5. Would you say that, please? 
Daniel 8, 5. Follow with me. And as I was considering, behold, a he-goat came from the west and on the face of the whole earth, touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he moved with choler against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the earth, and stampled upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand, therefore he, the he-goat, waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four little ones towards the four winds of heaven. I want to read another passage, and it's found in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, in verse 1. And it says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Say all men. For kings and for all those that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good, acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Father, anoint your word with great power in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen, and you may be seated. God bless you. Today I want to share on something that the Lord has given me. And I, I say that because many pastors, they preach in series, and, and that's a, a great way to do it. But sometimes uh, you have to just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you what you feel that God would have to say that week. And I want to share something that uh, is very important and because it deals with what's happening right now. It deals with what's happening in the news, and that is the United States and a possible encounter with the Iranians. And I want to share from the Word of God and what I feel the Bible says is going to happen. First of all, um, a third of the Bible is prophecy. Uh, of the over 8,000 scriptures that are in uh, the Old and New Testament, 1,817 are prophetic scriptures. And sometimes when these prophetic scriptures are fulfilled, there are double meanings. Sometimes they are fulfilled once, and then it repeats itself, and re it repeats itself the third time, the fourth time, and even more. You say, how does a prophetic word repeat itself if it is fulfilled a thousand years ago? Well, there are the same demons that are in that part of the world. Demons don't die. Demons don't move. There are territorial demons. Some have been in regions for uh, thousands and thousands of years. And so when a generation comes and commits the same sins that they're tempted with by those particular demons. They commit the same sins, identical sins, that brought the judgment of God upon past generations. And so then a generation comes, and they keep the commandments of God, and the blessings of God fall on that generation as long as they keep God's commandments. When Cain killed his brother, Cain was driven out of the Garden of Eden and he was driven to the land of Nod. Now, it's very important that we understand that the Garden of Eden was not in the fertile crescent of Iran that you read in textbooks. It, the fact is, uh, that is, does not have any comparison to the description of the Garden of Eden. And when Moses wrote, he said a garden was planted to the east it's talking about his geographical location. He was at Mount Sinai. And so east of Mount Sinai would have been towards Jerusalem. And when, when Cain was driven out of the garden, he was driven out 
past the Euphrates and then the Tigris River into what is now uh, Iran and uh, the northern part of Iraq. And so he was driven out in this location and on up into Afghanistan. That's where he dwelt and his followers. Well, he had a, a descendant by the name of Nimrod. Nimrod uh, means a mighty hunter. And it was one who didn't just hunt tigers and elephants, but he hunted people. He put people into slavery. And uh, the violence has always been a part of that part of the world through, through ancient Persia because it was founded by Cain, who was a man of violence and a man of murder and, uh, and temper. And so the Bible prophesied that out of this region of the world would rise up a force that would be an enemy to God's people, and it was ancient Persia. And so out of this began to rise up Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, which is, uh, Babylon is a part of Iraq. And Iraq and Iran were divided, and uh, the part of Persia, which is in Iran, was uh, renamed in 1936, but it was all a part of the Persian Empire. Well, it was here that Daniel had a vision, and in that vision, he saw this great statue. And in this statue, part of it was gold, part was silver, part was iron, and it came down to his feet made of clay. And all of these were symbolic of world powers that would rule and be a, a, a part of a ruling uh, empire when Jesus came back to this earth. The first was gold, which was made of, uh, uh, was, a, was a picture of, of Nebuchadnezzar. And then it was defeated and, and captured by the silver part of the statue, which was of King Cyrus and his running mate, Darius. Cyrus was the king of the Medes, which are the uh, Kurds today. And his daughter married Darius, who was the head of the Persians. And together they had a million-man army. They said they would stand and march before Cyrus, and it took 24 hours for his army to march before him. They were great builders. They dammed up the Euphrates River. And when the water started flowing, they were able to come in underneath the walls of Babylon. And that's how they took the city. And Belshazzar was in a party, a drunken party, when the hand of God in the finger was written on the wall. You've been found in the balance, and you've been found wanting. And Daniel interpreted that dream. And so the Medes and the Persians begin to rule, and their representation in the Bible here in the 8th chapter was a ram, a ram that had two horns. One horn was the Medes and the other was the Persians. And then there came a he-goat, and the he-goat came and it defeated the ram. And the he-goat was a picture of Alexander the Great and how the Europeans then rose to the leading world power. But what we have to understand is now this is repeating itself. And this prophetic word that came from Daniel is now unfolding again right today. And the he-goat is a picture of Donald Trump and the United States and what is getting ready to take place in this collision course between the United States and Iran that's going to all unfold in the next two and three weeks. And I want to share exactly why I believe that. First of all, it says, and the he-goat came from the West. Well, Donald Trump is a fulfillment of that scripture. Donald means world leader. And that doesn't mean he's the Antichrist, but he is a man of destiny that, uh, that uh, has been raised up by God. And the West is a picture of the United States. And so now here is this strong leader. They call him a he-goat. And a he-goat shows a Trump's disposition as a goat. Now, I'm not calling the president of the United States a goat, but I'm saying the Bible likens his personality as a goat. 
A goat is very strong. He's rugged. He's sure-footed. A goat uh, has uh, a certain type of temperament. And Daniel depicts this leader from the West, from this mighty force from the West, as like a he-goat. A goat will travel up terrain that most people could never climb themselves and other animals don't even climb. Or in other words, they take on projects that other politicians are afraid to tackle. And this is exactly what has been the assignment of Donald Trump. He's a person who's climbed steep and difficult terrains and uh, tr uh, tackled impossible situations and difficult challenges. And so Daniel calls Trump a he-goat and later in verse 8 refers to the Trump administration as the great horn. And then later there would be, when uh, his administration would be fulfilled, there would be four little horns. When I read that, the big horn, I'm the big horn and you're all four little horns. I don't know any other politician that describes his opponents with nicknames except President Trump. There's Pocahontas. There's uh, Sleepy Bernie. There's Crazy Joe Biden. Uh, my favorite is Alfred E. Newman. And uh, here now you read in the Bible, here's this politician who's quoted as the big horn against four little horns. Now, Daniel refers to Trump as, quote, the king of the West. Now, that's how a lot of the editorials are referring to Trump also. He thinks he's a king. He thinks he's a dictator. He thinks he can, he knows all the answers. And uh, this is what the Democrats are saying about him. So in verse 8, it says, And the wax, the goat waxed very great. And this is very interesting. Say, very great. This is what he's used as his campaign slogan. I'm going to make America great again. And he is used in these, these uh, uh, three or four uh, scriptures. The word very great is used again and again. And this is what uh, Donald Trump has described himself. We're going to make America great again. Now what I'm sharing today is this. I, feel, I see in this scripture the fulfillment of this. I see prophecy repeating itself. And this he goat is a picture of Donald Trump and the United States and what is getting ready to take place in the days ahead. In verse 5, and you can read it here, as I was considering, behold, a he goat came from the west and on the face of the whole earth. On the face of the whole earth, when he rose to power, it was a surprise to everyone. It goes on to say, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Or in other words, there was something remarkable about this man. Here is a billionaire, millionaire, a guy on television who has a personality like a goat and who the press says he doesn't have a chance to be elected, and miraculously, he comes into office. And the whole world sees this, and notable world leaders were very leery about Donald Trump. And so now he rises to power, and the entire world watched as uh, he became our 45th president. And so he now has become to a place of authority. And when you go into England, and I was just in Scotland, they love Donald Trump. You go to Australia, they love Donald Trump. He's more popular in those parts of the world than he is in parts of the United States. And so as he rises to power, it, uh, uh, it says in verse 6, that Trump, or he, uh, he came to the ram who had two horns. Now, the ram is a picture of the Persian Empire, which is made up of Iraq 
and now Iran. And he came and he, and he comes in the fury of his power. So in Daniel 8, 7, it says, and, and uh, he moved with Kohler. Trump moved with Kohler. I didn't even know the meaning of that word, C-H-O-L-E-R, and I looked it up. And it talks about a person who has a, a uh, personality that uh, is able to get irritable. A person who has a peevish temperament, who has anger, who has the ability to make other people mad, is abrupt. And it says, this world leader who comes from the West... He'll have the personality of a goat, and yet, and he'll be able to uh, get really irritated. And in this process that's going to happen, uh, Iran is going to do something that's going to really make Trump upset. Now, Trump held back this military strike. He held it back because he said that uh, it wasn't worth killing 150 civilians, and I, I can appreciate that. And now he's wanting to have negotiations, but somewhere in these negotiations, something's going to go sour, or Iran is going to make another military strike, and when they do, they're going to be sorry they did. And so the Bible goes on to say here, and in the fifth verse, it says, and the he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth. And this, what's happening there is affecting the whole earth. Because this is where the oil comes out of the Straits of Hormuz. And this is where the attacks have been on those tankers. And so if this is bottled up, you have about a third of the oil of the world stopped and it will cause gasoline in this country to go up to 4 and $5 a gallon. And so this affects the whole world. And it says here, and the goat touched not the ground. He touched not the ground. There's going to be, there's going to be a military strike. And the United States is going to come by air. It will not be by ground troops. He'll not touch the ground. There will be a... a devastating airstrike that will paralyze and destroy Iran. And, and uh, as uh, Iran has sunk a number of oil tankers, as they shot down our $185 million drone, you're going to see the United States retaliate, and uh, it will come from the air, and it won't come from the ground. And then in uh, Daniel 8, 7, it says, And Trump moved with choler, or with irritation and anger, and he smote Iran. And the quote says here that no power, there was no power in the ram to stand before him, and neither was there anyone to deliver Iran. In other words, Russia, nor China, nor any other power is going to defend Iran. America is going to defeat them, and when they do, when they have this great military victory, the Bible goes on to say here in the eighth verse, therefore the he-goat waxed very great. And when this happens, there's going to be a tremendous prosperity greater than we've ever seen before hit the United States. The Dow is going to go up even higher. Prosperity is going to come even in a greater measure. And I believe that God is going to prosper and bless many in this church. I believe Christian people are going to prosper because God is sending a great revival of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to shake the Catholic Church. It's going to go into that part of the world. It is going to be massive and powerful. But I'm here to, to say today that I believe that Donald Trump is a man of destiny and he is in a position that God ordained for his life and we are to pray for our president. And we're to pray that God will protect him, that God will use him, that God will give him wisdom 
and fulfill his mission here on this earth. I don't believe that becoming the leader of the greatest country and most powerful country in the world took God by surprise. I mean, God places leaders in positions. And God placed President Obama in position, and God has placed our president, President Trump, in position, and we are to pray for him. That's our responsibility. Daniel says, at an appointed time, and he begins to share this prophecy. And that appointed time was when Alexander the Great rose up. And then he comes back and he says, at the end of time, the end of time shows a repeat of this prophecy and shows with Donald Trump. And we must pray for our president. We must pray for his leadership. I want us all to stand. I want to lead in prayer also. Father, I curse in the name of Jesus, the Shiite spirit that's behind Iran. Lord, that they, there will be no nuclear weapons that the Iranians come up with. I pray in the name of Jesus that Israel will be protected, that America will be protected. There would be a wall of protection around our land in the name of Jesus. Give wisdom, give direction to our leaders, and we commit it to you for the glory of God. Now lay your hand right here on your chest. Pray with me. Say, in the name of Jesus, Lord, forgive me of every sin. We are living in the time just before you return. Lord, we see the end time here in the scripture, and it's happening before our eyes. Lord, take out of me anything that's impure, anything that's not right, and may I be squeaky clean and stand before you. Let nothing hinder me from fulfilling what you've called me to do. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program, and the fact is, for any gift that is sent, any gift that is sent um, that, that uh, will help us, I want to send you this CD. And uh, it will be a blessing to you. And uh, of, this, of what I shared today, you, you can receive it. And I know that uh, it will open your eyes to what is happening this very day. The information, how you can receive it, is right there on the screen. But those who can give a gift of $100 or more, I want to send the Quick Scan Bible and this will help us as we spread the gospel in parts of the world that uh, does not have the freedom of hearing the gospel. I look forward to hearing from you, and I look forward to seeing you again this time next week. The Bible says, be ye not unwise, but understanding. Understand what the will of the Lord is. If we will seek Him, God will show us how to be blessed. God will break off of us whatever the devil has put on us in Jesus' name. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.